Would you just lay your hands on them? We just want to speak a blessing over all the dads on this wonderful, beautiful Father's Day morning. You know, there's a song that says, Daddy's hands were always kind and gentle, but then they were, form, they were firm when they needed to be firm. You know, and it's just something special about a father's touch over our lives. But I think that the same, that every relationship is a two-way street, and I think it's something special when we lay our hands on our dad. Maybe your dad is not here. Maybe he's gone on home to be with the Lord. Well, reach out to somebody else and honor them in their fatherhood. You know, and you don't have to be a biological father to be a father. You just reach out to somebody and you mentor them and you share your wisdom with them. You're being a father. So, Father, right now in this beautiful atmosphere of worship, we bless every man that is here this morning. Whether they be biological fathers, adopted fathers, mentors, instructors, teachers, coaches. Lord, even those that are out of town this morning, Father, we just by faith release a blessing upon their lives. We thank you, Father, for the hard work that they, they do on our behalf, on their home's behalf, on their family's behalf, on their children's behalf. Father, I just thank you that the work of their hand is blessed. I thank you, Father, for strength from above, Lord, to carry on the task that is laid before them. Father, we thank you for the heads of our home, our fathers that are leading us, that are guiding us, that are instructing us, Lord, giving us wisdom, giving us knowledge of life. I thank you, Father, for fathers who have a heart after God that will lead their family towards godliness and righteousness. I bless each and every male person here this morning. And we thank you that it is your grace upon their life. It's your anointing, your power, your glory, your presence upon their life that helps them get up every morning to go and do what you've called them to do, provide for their families, Lord. And if there's any person, father, any husband, any father that is here dealing with sickness in the name of Jesus, we lay our hands on them and call them healed, call them restored, call them set free. We call them whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. We declare our fathers to live long and live strong, to declare the goodness of God Almighty. Oh, Father, and above all, we love you for being that good, good Father to us. We embrace your love this morning, the love of the Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Would you do me a favor? Would you give your dad a big hug? Reach out. Go get out of your seat. Go look for somebody. Give them a hug. Tell them how much you love them, how much you appreciate them, how proud you are of them, how much you honor them and respect them, how we wouldn't be where we are today had it not been for the sacrifices that they have made for our lives this morning. We bless all the fathers here this morning. All of those of you who are serving up here, happy Father's Day, happy Father's Day. That's it. Why don't we do this? Before we're seated, why don't we give the Lord a shout of praise, a shout of victory, a shout of glory in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. For the Father of all fathers this morning. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I'd like to take this time to possibly welcome anybody who might be visiting us for the first time. If you are our guest this morning and you're comfortable with letting us know that you're our guest this morning, would you do me a favor and just raise your hand right where you are? There's one way back there in the very back. We welcome you in the, into the house of the Lord. Anybody else way back over here? We welcome you. Yes, come on, let's let them know how awesome it is to have them 
at the house of the Lord this morning. Our ushers have given you a welcome card. If you'll just take 30 seconds and fill out that minimal information, we just want to send you a special little something in the mail. Um, just letting you guys know that, one well, number one, we recognize that you're here, and we are thankful that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. Amen. Now, if you'll do me a favor and turn your attention to the monitors for this week's news. Welcome to Family Faith Center. We are so glad you're here. Now let's take a look at what's happening this week around the campus. Ladies, are you ready for Resilient Conference 2017? Tickets are now on sale at the Wi-Fi bar, or you may also register online by visiting ffcbigspring.org. July 21st and 22nd with keynote speaker Wendy Perez. Tickets are $25 per person. Stay connected with our social media pages for all the latest information. Family Sunday will be held Sunday, June 25th. We will dedicate children, induct new members, and have water baptisms. If you are interested in any of these three ceremonies, please be sure to attend the proper class on Tuesday, June 20th. We will have child dedication at 6 p.m., membership connect at 7 p.m., and water baptismal at 8 p.m. Are you and your family new members of FFC? Have you recently begun your new life in Christ? If so, we'd love to have you join us at the Welcome Luncheon, Sunday, June 25th, immediately following our 1030 worship experience in the Annex Building. Youth and young adults, join us for Summerfest 2017. Please join us for a day full of teen tournaments, delicious food, movie under the moon, motivational chat, and many more fun activities. It's happening Friday, June 30th. Registration opens at 10 a.m., $5 for all day entry. For more info, contact Mateo at 432-741-0293. Join us as we team up and clean our city on Sunday, June 25th at 6 p.m. Be sure to wear your blue FFC volunteer shirts. We'll see you at the lake entrance of the Comanche Trail Park. Kingdom Builders is in search of three adults and Wednesday Night Toss is in search of two adults to join their teams and make it happen here at FFC. If you are interested in either of these opportunities, please contact our department heads, Lisa Nieto and Gloria Munoz. FFC Next Steps guides you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Next Steps is a small group setting where you can have an interactive discussion with a knowledgeable course instructor. It all begins Sunday morning, July 2nd, from 10 to 10.30 in the Annex building. We are so honored to be a part of your worship experience, in person and online. Enjoy the rest of your service. You know, um, it's always something real special for us to be able to have Family Sunday. And it's a tradition that we've had for a number of years now where the last Sunday of every month, we just take time to dedicate um, new babies, babies that hadn't been dedicated before, whether they're one month old or whether they're 12 years old, the age doesn't matter. It's the act of obedience in the word of God it says that we should bring our children to the Lord. And so next Sunday is our family Sunday. So it's a time where we come and we dedicate those babies. Also, for those of you who are interested in getting water baptized, next Sunday is your opportunity um, to declare your faith and declare that you are now a disciple of Jesus Christ through the obedience of getting water baptized. And for those of you who are new to our church, maybe you've been attending our church for some time and you just feel a tug in your heart to be part part of the membership of the family here at Family Faith. We are going to have a class for you this Tuesday. So this Tuesday in our Annex building at 6 o'clock, we'll have baby dedication. At 7 o'clock, we'll have member connect class. And then at 8 o'clock, we'll have um, water baptismal class. So please make sure you attend the appropriate class for the type of ministry that you're interested in. And then prepare yourself to join us on Sunday morning where we'll be doing all those special ceremonies. And then immediately following our Sunday morning service. If you are new to our church or you're going to become a new member or you recently became a new member or maybe you just recently started your new walk with the Lord, we want to host a welcome luncheon for you. So immediately following the service, um, next Sunday, right after our family Sunday, we'll, if you'll join us in our annex building, we'll have a lunch ready and prepared for you. Pastor Sam and I just want to get to know you a little bit better and just build a strong relationships because we know 
that what makes a strong family is relationship. So we want to have that time of fellowship with you. So make sure you you just plan. Don't cook. You're going to come and have a wonderful lunch with us. It's just going to be our treat to bless you and to get to know you a little bit better. And then also, coming up, we are um, getting ready to launch our new season and our new semester of our Next Step session. I know there's several of you who already took that session, um, that class of Next Steps, and because there's so many new um, members of um, into the church here recently, we decided to start Next Steps all over again. And Next Steps is just a small setting. It's a small classroom with a small setting where you can have interactive discussion with the instructor. Um, it's a class where you get to know God a little more intimately. It's where you get to discover um, the freedom that God has for you. It, it, you discover the purpose and the design that God has made you for. And then also we get you connected because life and and ministry gets boring if you just go and come and go and come but you add so much more in life to it when you get connected and you make it happen so those classes are going to be starting on July the 2nd just as the announcement has said and every Sunday we'll be having those courses um, course number one know God course number two find freedom course number three discover your purpose and then course number four make a difference so please make sure you attend that. It's going to be in the, what we call our Zumba room. It's a classroom. You'll give you, we'll give you instructions as you walk in there on how um, to get to that class. And we are just so excited. Brother James, Sister Sophia are going to be leading that class out for you guys. Um, so we're going to get you grounded and rooted in the Word of God. So that starts on July the 2nd, and you do not want to miss that. Um, we had donuts um, with Dad this morning, and there were several of you that came and had a wonderful time of fellowship with your children and your spouses. Um, but we still have lots and lots of donuts left. So we want to invite you guys immediately following this service. If you'll make your way over to the annex, pick up a donut, take it home. Maybe that'll be your dessert for the day. And then we also have a backdrop where you can, uh, what we call our selfie station. You can come and take funny um wonderful pictures with your family as a memory of Father's Day 2017. And then ladies, don't forget, Sweet Retreat is right around the corner. Um, tickets will be available in the Wi-Fi bar immediately after this service. Now, if you'll do me a favor, turn your attention one more time to the, to the screens this morning. You've been you've called, called to battle, 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 but you've, but you've been, been destined, destined to win. To win. And failure, and failure and defeat, and defeat is, not is not in your, in your future. future. Hallelujah. You may be in the greatest battle right now you've ever been in in your life. You may feel like you can't stand anymore. You've done all you know to do, and yet you don't see anything working in the natural. That is always an indication you got the devil right where you want him. He is a he has just fired his best shot. You're still standing, and you're going to win. Hallelujah. to win. You were created to win. A woman with destiny. Sometimes along the journey, there's challenges that seem too big. Dreams that seem too far. Your passion may have faded out. The thought of not being good enough doubt tries to win. When everything seems impossible, choose to be resilient. A woman able to withstand. A woman able to recover. A woman able to bounce back. Life may stretch me, bend me, and compress me. But I, I choose to be resilient. God's dream for you never died. God's dream for you never detoured. When he knit you together in your mother's womb, he set a path straight for you. And he put the unique abilities and callings and quirkiness and genius and all the things that you are. He put them together for a specific purpose. And that purpose has not changed. No matter what life is speaking to you, no matter what life is saying to you, his promises have never changed. Believe again. 
Amen. All right. Powerful speakers coming our way in two weeks. Dr. Savelle in four weeks, the Women's Conference. Pastor Benny's wife, Wendy. And then in 15 weeks, uh, starting on Saturday night, our release conference will be here. Amen. All right. Anybody here between the ages? I've got four things i got to do here, all right? All right. Then I may preach. All right. Um, anybody here between 16, 15, and 13, 29? Raise your hand, please. We want to invite you. Come on, right here. They're going to pass these out. All right. Somebody's going to pass them out. I'm ready. I don't know about y'all. Thank you, Lord. Uh, they're go We're going to invite you to this powerful event. Uh, on Saturday, 14 hours nonstop. We want you to be here. It's a powerful day of ministry for all teenagers and young adults. The generation of today, amen. They're not the generation of tomorrow, they're the generation of today. So if you're between the age of 13, 13 and 27, 13 and 27, we want you to send your nieces, your nephews, your uh, they may be with you during the summer, sons and daughters. We want to bless them and spend the day with them to impart some things into them. All right, who has the faith to bring some oil to get blessed? Who, whose is this oil? All right, who, that's you, sister. Father, bless this oil. May everything it touch prosper. May everything it touch rebuke. May everything it touch cancel any sickness or disease. And Father, we declare the oil of anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon it Lord we thank you father that uh, sickness will be rebuked demons will be canceled spiritual warfare will be eradicated and more importantly angels will be released we declare peace we declare breakthroughs and we declare their best summer yet in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you sir pass that on to my sister there I used to put that in my children's shoes amen praise God Thank you, Lord. Before they'd go to school, I'd put that on their shoes. I used to put it on my wife's forehead when she was asleep. Glory. Now you know, husbands, what to do with your wife. Amen. You can't stop or talk her out of it. While she's asleep, put some oil on her. Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Don't forget next Sunday at 6 o'clock. I know there's a lot going on, uh, but it's better than being bored. Uh, next, next Sunday at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. for one hour. We're going to go exercise, burn calories by the way of picking up trash at the Comanche Trail Park. You saw the video. Join Eric and I and a lot of our members will be wearing our blue t-shirts. Let's go display the church out in public. The church is not here. This is training. The church is out there. Amen. And so let's go out there and be the church for one hour. Uh, threefold, threefold blessing, burn calories, fellowship with a like-minded brother, and then pick up trash at the same time, and it'll be a good thing. Amen. All right, and then the last thing I want to say is our mornings of ministries have kicked off. Our gymnasium is open. Uh, someone was in there this morning power walking. Praise God. They were power walking. That's awesome. Uh, you know, I was here at 6.30, and when I was at home getting dressed at 6, um, I thought, man, the next six hours, the next six hours, what I'm about to do the next six hours will affect the next 162 hours. You know, there's 168 hours in a week. Take 24 times 7. There's 168 hours a week. What I do these six hours on Sunday from 6 a.m. to 12 noon will affect the next 162. I will sleep good this week. And not only sleep, I will rest. I will wake up on fire because I rested, not just slept. Most Americans don't. They wake up with body aches. But what you do the first hours of the first day, this is vital, is crucial on Sunday. And so our morning of ministry has kicked off. This morning at 7, there was about 20 people here doing uh, faith confessions and worshiping and praying and just being here, just being here. I mean, think of it. Let's be real and honest. Uh, my brother, we'll go work for a man for 40 to 50 hours that we don't even like, this man that we work for, and then get a paycheck that isn't even enough. All right, y'all aren't being honest over here, all right? 
Let me go over here. Maybe these two guys will be honest. You go work for somebody 40 to 50 hours a week that you sometimes can't agree with. Then we're going to get a paycheck that most of the time is not enough. But we're going to give them 40 to 50 good, hard-working hours and yet come up short, insufficient. I have found a way. I'm not kidding you, folks. I have found a way. How to defeat that broken system. And it's not by taking your money. I've never done that and never will. I have five jobs and five companies that I work with. I don't need your money. So just thought I'd throw out there because some whisper out there saying that I take church people money. I've never done that. I'm a man of integrity. Okay? I pay my own way. Okay? I'm going to Hawaii 10 days in August, and you're not paying for it. I'm paying for it. Okay? Uh, but listen, don't listen to them crazy whispers. Right. Pastor Sam taking people's money. No, no. You don't even know what I work on my days off or who I'm talking to in Belgium. Okay? Listen, I have found a way that when you operate this way, you'll live a restful life. Stress-free, hassle-free, sweatless victory, drama-free, trauma-free. They're good. And the number one way I found is this, that when you honor God with your time, talent and treasure listen to me friends when we honor God with our time talent and treasure he will in return no matter what color skin you have or what education background you have whether you went to Harvard or you didn't go to hard nothing like me When we honor God with our time, talent, and treasure, God will open up the sky vaults of heaven and honor you. Now, you know, Cassidy, one time God spoke to me. He said, I said, Lord, why am I not being honored? Where's my harvest? He said, your big mouth's getting you in trouble. You're obeying me, but you're complaining and obeying. You're serving me, but you're griping and serving. This is me several years ago. You're tithing, but you're talking bad about tithing. That was me back then. But I found out, folks, the devil can't stop you. No person can stop you. The only thing that can stop you is this little thing called the tongue. So I changed my tongue. And I changed my treasure. Are you with me? So what we do the first hours on Sunday. (laughs) That's why when somebody calls me Sunday, they'll they'll call me on Sunday and, and, and want to gossip about some members. I said, not today. Wait till Tuesday. Okay. Or, you know, crazy folk want to call you on Sunday mornings to throw you off. You can't let them. I said, honey, you got to tell them, honey, this can wait till Tuesday. Okay? So, that's when I do church business Tuesday. Mondays I do other uh, cities and states. So, I want to encourage you. Do something different, Gavino, than what others are. Because when you do something different, God will release his destiny on your life. Amen.
All I can tell you is what I've seen happen in my own experience with what I've done. I can't tell you what others have done or haven't done. I don't know. All I can tell you is what I've seen work. I have found a way, say a way, to honor God with my time, like you are today for 90 minutes, treasure and talents. When you give God those three, He is going to rock your world. Amen. Amen. Is that good? So I'm so excited about mornings of ministry on Sunday. I really am. This is a good thing that what I do these six hours will affect the next 162 for the rest of the week. And that is my honor, and God will reimburse it back this week. How many believe in reimbursements? No, no, no. How many believe in reimbursements? Uh, You know, how many have lent somebody some money? Here, here, bro, I'm going to lend you these 20 bucks. How many want to get reimbursed back? Yeah, yeah, especially if it was a loan, right? Or, you know, you worked all year for the, for the government, for the city, for the state, for your job, and at the end of the year, you're due back some, some return. How many want that reimbursement back? Yeah. Or do you just say, no, you know what, y'all can keep it. No. How many of you have ever done that? Who's done that? You, you know what, I don't need my $2,200. Y'all can keep it. No. I, anybody here done that? No, no. See, so we can expect God to reimburse us back. Amen. Yeah. So I want to encourage you on Sunday mornings, if and when you're in town, don't wait for 1020. Man, we're here, 7 o'clock. If you want to come work out, walk, power walk in the gym. Uh, If you want to come fellowship in the coffee shop, the air conditioner will be up by this coming week. The outside's done. The inside coil blew on us. But we can fellowship in there, mentor somebody, coach somebody, encourage somebody, drink some coffee, eat some calorie-free donuts, come on, and spend the morning in the house of God. You'll be amazed what one, two, three, four, five, or even six hours in his house will do for you the rest of the week. Can you say amen? Amen. Our rushers are here to serve you. They're going to prepare the tithe and the offering for you. If you need an envelope, a green or a white... Please make sure to uh, let them know which ones. The white ones you know for tithes are for offerings, and the green ones are for the payoff of the church. Uh, So uh, please understand that uh, we are an entity of honor and integrity. Uh, We have CPAs, we have lawyers, we have attorneys, and we have uh, administrators who manage all the money. Your pastor never sees a dime what you give. I don't even touch the money. I don't have to. And so I don't know who gives what. I don't know who ties, who done tie. That's between you and God. Uh, What else? We are a ministry of integrity and honor. And I'm saying all that because there's a little voice out there that's uninformed. And that's all it is. It's just an uninformed voice that really don't know uh, so t- please be aware that uh, we 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 are a ministry of honor and integrity because I ever said Lord watch this I ever said Lord uh, if I ever cheat or, or or do anything wrong shut me down in a second put me down shut just shut me down hit me with lightning take me off and so I'm still here I guess I ain't done anything wrong okay I ain't a liar, I ain't a cheater, I ain't a stealer. We ain't any of that. This church is honorable. This church tithes. This church saves. This church sows. We sow every week. What are we doing right now? Uh, We're doing Salvation Army. Is that right? We're doing the Salvation Army. We're sowing to the Boys and Girls Club. Salvation Boys and Girls Club. Every week we're sending them a check. For 10 weeks we're going to send them a $250 check. Every week during the summer so that we can feed 100 and something uh, children of Big Spring, Texas. Uh, Because that's what we do. Because that's what we do. And so, y'all need to talk about that. Amen. You need to go gossip about that. You need to go gossip that this church is helping the Salvation Army and the Boys and Girls Club. Amen. That if it weren't for this church, them kids wouldn't have anything to eat possibly. Can I get an amen in the house? You, you need to gossip that every month our members here send Africa close to $1,000. Amen. You need to gossip about that. Amen. I'm just giving people something to gossip about. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Is that good? All right, so we have in our situation, uh, Brother Luke, in the city of Big Spring, Texas, where 80% of our citizens, and I include them mine, I, I believe every citizen in this city is my son and my daughter. I'll take them all, even the bad ones. 
They're my sons and my daughters. I am the second longest tenured pastor in town. I've been here 17 years. Amen. And I'm so glad that I don't want to go to Miami to live and work where I just recently was invited to. I'm so glad I don't want to move to L.A. I'm glad I'm happy right here. Because you know when you're planted, you know where your sap's coming from. Amen. And sap is all that matters. And this is my sap city. Y'all know what I mean by that, right? Sap is life. And I've been here 17 years, second longest tenured pastor. And what I've seen in 17 years, Brother John, is that... 80% of people that live in Big Spring, Texas are unfortunately living in generational or situational poverty. 80%, that's 8 out of 10 people, live in generational or situational, excuse me, poverty, a lack of things. But I'll... We're here to help that those lacks aren't lacks from the outside. They're lacks that are on on the inside of people. That if we can change and eradicate the lack of education, the lack of information, the lack of teaching, we can change the lacks that are external. So 80% of people in Big Spring live in poverty. 10% live in middle class. And the other 10% live in stable, strong class, the wealthy. But it is up to the church, with the anointing of the church, to bring that statistic down. To help people move from living with someone else to getting their own apartment for a year. And then help them moving from a one-year rental to buy a home. Come on. In their name. Not grandma's name. She too old to be signing for you. Okay. But get it in your name. And then we've got to help that person move from living in that house in their name and pay it off. And then help them. People in our city become owners and possessors. Listen. Not of things. But of integrity and dignity. First of all. Are you with me? So churches like ours... The devil really hates because he is trying to keep the whole city impoverished, impoverished. He wants to go to 90% and only have 10% live good. And the other 90% struggle all the days of our life and their children and their children's children struggle. But that doesn't need to be the case, folks. Churches like ours who are biblical and Bible based, who teach the whole gospel, say the full gospel. Not just salvation, not just healing, but salvation, the baptism of the Spirit, discipleship, small groups, and economics. Churches like ours, the devil doesn't really like. So he's going to try to do everything to get people out there at the coffee shop talking negative about your church and about you. Because he wants to to get people out of position from their royalty and their prosperity. Because he knows as long as he can keep us broke as a church, the whole city is going to be broke. Let me say that again. If the church is broke, the whole city is going to be broke. We're not depending on the government or the legislative or the city or the county. The church, the church, say the church, church. needs to have the resources to educate people, to illuminate people. That's good. To prepare people so that when they go out into the city, they can live with dignity and honor and respect. And not have to be borrowing or even someone else. Now we're borrowing each other's name. Hey, bro, can I get you a sign for my electric over here? No, no, no. no. But for us to have a good name, that's what this church is all about. Is to pull people out of the miry clay and help you in faith, family, and finance. Can you say amen? Amen. So we're going to start teaching during the offering time for seven minutes about how to move out from generational poverty and situational poverty. 
Now, I know how to do this. In 1991, in closing, before we serve you, in 1991, on a Sunday night, Minister Clemens, God spoke to me in 1991, and he said, sow a $100 seed. And I sowed a $100 seed, and then he told me, tomorrow, have your wife call the government and get off of food stamps, get off of Medicaid, and get off of welfare. I said, man, that's $700 worth of food stamps. Gee, that's a lot of food. And Lord, I tithe off them food stamps. I'm buying $70 from the food bank or my pastor. I would tithe off my food stamps. Uh, I said, man, but I did it. And look, from 1991 on, does it look like I'm losing weight? <laughs> or I have skipped a meal or two? Never been hungry. I broke generational poverty off of us. Look, and then my sons, they'll, they'll never know what food stamps are. They've never heard of them. They don't even know what checks are. They'll never know Medicaid. They'll never know welfare. They'll never know living with two, three people. No, no. We're talking about us breaking out so you can break out others amen. under you and around you can you say amen? amen so together we've got to eradicate poverty in our city so this deal about tithes and offerings is not just about a church getting money it's about you breaking free and breaking loose so that you can be empowered with the blessing to break others out of their misery and out of their lack of dignity. Can you say amen? amen. God's going to bless you folks. And he's going to bless you big. But remind yourself that it's not just for us. It's to help others come out of what they're going through. Father, we thank you for these your sheep. Thank you for every tither and every sower. And thank you Lord that we're here to be a blessing. We're here to sow our honor and our obedience. Father, we thank you that we're not just going to come out alone. We're going to bring others with us. We thank you that the statistic of poverty in our city, poverty in our county, the numbers will go down and blessing of families will increase. Husbands and wives, young adults, teenagers uh, doing good in school, doing good in college, doing good in their homes, uh, doing good in their marriages. Father, we declare the do-good anointing is on us this summer. We release our gifts to you and thank you that you'll give us back so that we can continue to be a blessing in Jesus' name. God bless you as you sow. Yes, it is. See His glory. I love it. Feels like heaven on earth. I love Something's it. Moving. It's moving. Something's changing. Hallelujah. See His glory. It's coming Feels down. Feels like heaven on yes, earth. Yes, yes. Something's moving. The statistics Something's are changing. changing. See His glory. Feels like heaven on earth. There is lightning and thunder. Glory. Miracles and wonders. this morning we 
this great anointing father we open our ears and we open our hearts to receive revelation from your word thank you lord for educating us more in war and bible principles that we may be bible people word people faith people in these last days we thank you for using us all as lights and as salts on this earth to be a blessing to our community in jesus name and everyone said amen and amen take your seats god bless you this morning on this great father's day 2017 uh, I want to talk to you about the three roles of a father and the powerful roles of a father. From the very beginning, God has instituted that fatherhood and father grace be in this generation. It is such a blessing to know that God has fathers available for us. Fathers available for us. Now, even if your earthly, physical father may have already gone on to be with the Lord, uh, God has fathers for you. God always provides. Come on, say that with me. God always provides. He provides what you need to be designed for your destiny. He will never leave you orphaned or in lack. And fatherhood is one of the most if not the most important calling that there is with fathers we can conquer great opportunities with a lack of fathers we may end up missing opportunities and so you want to today look for fathers Look for your biological father. Well, that rascal never did mean any good. Well, there's one thing he, he can do. There's something he can do. Take that from that. And then go look for other fathers that can meet and edify and equip you. I'm just saying, without fathers, we will not reach our ultimate promised land. Because from the very beginning, from Genesis to revelation we see it friends where fathers are vital to the kingdom of God and the word of God let's look at something in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 5 in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 5 the impartation of a father the impartation of a father Genesis 17 and verse 5 it reads like this neither God speaking to Abram Neither shall your name any more be called Abram. So here comes a change. Now thy name shall be Abraham. For a man, no, no, not a man, a father of many nations have I made thee. So God, from the very beginning with Abram and Abraham, he said, it is in my plan and it is vital that you become a father. That you cover children, that you protect, that you guide, that you lead, that you instruct, that you impart. And he was telling Abram in changing his name to Abraham, I don't just need you to be a man of faith. I need you to be a father of faith. I need you to be a father. Somebody say a father. So if it's that important to God and it's that important to Abram or now Abraham, Let's see how important it is in the New Testament. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. To one of the greatest, if not the second or third or fourth greatest men in the Bible next to God. The Apostle Paul. This guy wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. This Bible that you and I carry, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And look what he said. He said, for though you have 10,000 instructors, 10,000 teachers... In Christ, yet have you not many fathers? For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. He's saying here, yes, we have many teachers throughout our life. Yes, we're going to have many instructors. Yes, we're going to have many communicators. But the key, say the key, is to have a father. A father. A father that will impart, not just instruct, thank God for the instruction, but he needs to be able to impart.
impart. The word impart is defined as to deposit or to transmit. Say transmit. That's what you're looking for. You want uh, your father to be able to transmit something into you. Not just his good looks, but even to go beyond that and transmit uh, qualities and traits. Are you with me? And so we see here from the Old Testament and the New Testament how important it is to the Bible itself on fathers and fatherhood. That if we have none, if all we have are teachers and instructors, then we're really not going to get imparted much. We're going to have a lot of head info. Come on, say head info. But not much heart info. Ooh, I just made up my own word. Man, that's good. That's the Holy Ghost right there. Watch. Head info versus heart info. What I mean by info, I mean empowerment. Are you with me? So an educator, which we need, teachers, instructors, which we need, which we are, will educate and info, inform our head. But a father will go beyond the head. It will impart empowerment to the heart. And only when there's empowerment to the heart will there be endowment to the hand. Ooh, somebody going to be on Facebook tonight. <laughs> and that's one of the things that's missing. Watch this. So no fathers. No impo to the heart. Empowerment. And if there's no empowerment to the heart, there's no endowment to the hand. And that's why we have very few possessors. Achievers. Are you with me? So now look at the importance of a father. Biological father. Heavenly father. Spiritual father, look at the importance. I'm a spiritual father to about 30 pastors. They all texted me this morning. It's still blowing up up in there. I am a spiritual father to pastors. They look to me for some sap. Y'all know what sap is, right? Y'all know what I mean? Sap. You take the sap out of a tree and what's going to happen to the tree? It's going to dry. So now a father is like sap that will bring life of empowerment and endowment. Come on, say that with me. Empowerment. empowerment. Come on, do it with me. Empowerment. empowerment. Endowment. Endowment. Empowerment. Endowment. 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 How many want the endowment? Amen. It's going to come from the empowerment of a father. And so that's how vital and important our fathers are in our lives. All right? Now, I want to talk to you this morning briefly on the three roles of a father, a genuine father. Now, listen, my father went home to be with the Lord last year on August the 9th. He passed away August the 11th. Uh, we buried him. And, and, you know, so I had a wonderful father, an amazing father. But watch this. Why you need multiple fathers. Watch this. My father, Samuel Sr., never taught me a scripture from the Bible. My father never took me to church. My father never taught me a Jesus song. My father never told me or taught me to pray. Never. Never. But he taught me how to never be late. He taught me how to never lie. And when I did lie, my butt was fried <laughs> for a month. He taught me how to never be late, how to never lie, how to organize and leave, live clean. You go to my closet right now. Go check out my closet after church, James. You're not going to find a mess. 
Okay? He never taught me anything about God or Jesus or church. But he taught me, son, never be late. Son, get a plan. Son, be prepared. Son, don't lie and don't cheat. That's why I've never cheated on my wife. 27 years, I've never cheated on my wife. And guess what? I don't have any desire to. She more than enough. And I've had some pretty good women come after me. I ain't that bad. I'm like Brother Jesse. They still hit on me too. <laughs> but my dad told me, when you get married, that's your wife. And that's it. So my father never taught me spiritual things, but he taught me practical things. Watch this. What was he doing? He didn't even know it. And he was imparting to me 1 Corinthians 15, 46. That says, it's not the spiritual things that are first. It's the natural things that are first. In other words, if you can't show up on time, if you can't live a clean, orderly life, if you don't come up with a plan, and if you cheat and lie, God never going to use you. Don't expect it. Nor bless you. Don't expect it. So watch. My biological father never taught me spiritual things. But he taught me an area of life that opened up the door to spiritual things. Are you with me? So that's why now you need two, three, four fathers in your life. Because while one can give you this, the other one will give you that. And while the other one can impart this. And you put them all together. And you'll never lack for nothing. I've already talked to Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis this morning. Those are my fathers. So I have this. And I have that. Wow. What the enemy's trying to do is this. Watch. Come on. Go with me to John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. Before we get to the three things of a godly father and what, they, what they're called to do. Look what this does. You, verse John. This is the Bible, folks. This is the Bible, John 8, 44. I didn't think this was in the Bible. And when I read it, I was like, what? Look at this. You are of your father, the devil. My gosh. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. It's in red. He said, you are of your father, the devil. So now, somebody up in here, not here, but there. The devil was their father. And Jesus was telling them, the devil is your father. So now there's a possibility for me to have a good father and a bad father. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father, that's what you're going to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. That's who he is. For he is a liar. Come on. And the father of it. He's the father of all lies. And look what he was telling them. He said, because he's your father, you're going to do what he does. So now that opens up the opportunity now for us to, you, you know, I, I, who, who's, who's, I know who my God is, but who's my father? I know who my Savior is, but who's my father? And so now that's why we've got to continue to settle and seek. Come on, say settle and seek. That I have multiple fathers in my life. I have my biological father who imparted to me the natural world. Clean your window, you know, your car window. Don't leave it all slobbery, you know, all, all messed up. And, and vacuum your carpet. Sweep your front porch. You know, he, that, that will open the door to this. I owe everything to my father right now. 
God rest his soul. Amen. Everything that I am and everyone who I know and everything we're doing around the world, I owe it to him because he taught me. Son, if you show up late, ain't nobody going to listen to you. Do not ever show up late to a meeting and then try to say something. <laughs> and it's like that. People who show up late, they're the ones who want to show up late and do all the talking. I'll be sitting at the table and like, shut that fool up, man. Can't even manage minutes and he wants to come in here and run a meeting. So, it is a blessing to know that you are blessed with multiple fathers. Multiple fathers that are going to give you a multiple of uh, blessings. Are you with me? Yeah. One of our sons just recently got engaged in his fiance, and they're going to get married here sometime soon. I don't know, soon, hopefully soon, very, very soon, get pregnant soon. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, I told her, I said, girl, you got your dad, you got a great stepdad, you got your granddad, now you got me. Man, you're blessed. <laughs> you're going to get that from him. You, you, you're not going to get any ranching from me. <laughs> you are not going to get any camping from me. You are not going to get sleeping outside from me. You are not going to go, go castrate a cow from me or whatever they do. I don't know what they do. That's not, that's not me. That's not what you're going to get from me. <laughs> but you're going to get it from him. And from him, you're going to get this. And from him, you're going to get this. And from me, you're going to get this. What a blessing to have multiple fathers. Because now you can glean and be imparted a lot of things into your life versus this scripture we just read he's limited not only is he a liar he's limited yeah. one father the father of lies the devil and folks his job is to convince our minds that I don't need anybody I don't need anything you know, when Jerry Savelle comes in two weeks, he's not just coming up here to preach and bless people and pray and give you a good word of faith and go back there and, 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 and sow a seed into his life and see you, bye. No, we're going to sit down and he's going to rebuke and teach me some things. He's going to impart some things to me. He's going to tell me where I'm right and good and where I'm wrong and bad. And I'm going to have to sit up there and receive and not say, man, this guy's too old school. He's in his 70s. I'm in my 40s. Things have changed. I don't really need to listen to him. Uh-uh. Are you with me, church? Yeah. Yet the enemy wants you and I to think we don't need anybody in our lives. He wants us secluded, and he wants us with no power. Amen. And the way no pow empowerment comes is by us not allowing ourselves to have fathers in our life. Now God is blessing you with some fathers. God is blessing you with. I love it. I'm not just a preacher. I'm not just a pastor. And I'm not saying uh, I'm your father. Uh, trust me. I don't think I want to be your father. <laughs> unless you say so. But I love it. I'm not just a preacher or a pastor. I love being a father. And the way I train up pastors and help them and bless them is the same way I do with Samuel, Daniel, Mark. God told me it's easy. What would you do with them? Do with them. Really, Lord? Yeah. Well, I spanked them. He said, spank them. <laughs> so a lot of people think once a month when I go preach, I'm just going to go preach and do my thing. No, I'm going to go spank some people. And you know what the blessing is? They love it. This morning, we were on the phone with another pastor from Abilene, Texas. They want to come in our family. I love it. Why? They're looking for fathers. They're looking for an empowerment and an endowment. Now, come on, let me give you the three things that us good fathers do uh, with our children and with our children's children. Number one, go with me to the book of, let's see, come on, go with me to the book of John. The first thing we do is... We empower to the truth. Say empower to the truth. 
John 14. We're just going to read John 14, verse 10 and on. It says this, But believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? This is Jesus. I'm in the Father, the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. Come on, say Jesus' words. God works. That's what that says. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Else believe me for the very work's sake. And then it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works shall these be done because I go to who? Look, Jesus, how many believe Jesus was a bad boy when he was here on earth? I mean, the dude was bad, as in good. I mean, multiplying fish and bread. Raising up a kid out of a casket. Amazing. Walking on water. Showing up in a room and then disappearing. Who needs magicians? The guy was amazing. Jesus was awesome. When he was here on earth. Yet, he said, I need my father. I go to my father. He could do it himself. Anything he could do. If he was hungry and there was no Sonic, like last night, he could create a Sonic and create his own grilled cheese with pickles. Jesus could do anything he wanted to while he was here on the earth, yet he said, I go to my father. that awesome? Come on, let's keep reading a little bit more. The father... And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, he said, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. A couple more verses. If you ask anything in my name, I'm going to do it. And then he said this, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then he said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, yet he abide with you forever. Talking about the Holy Spirit, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because the world doesn't see him, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells in you, and shall be with you. Or in you. So notice what's going on here. Jesus is saying, I'm going to go to the Father, and us two together are going to give you the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. So the first thing, a genuine, heartfelt, empowered Father, empowered, endow his children, is with the Spirit of truth. He will always lead you to the truth. A Father will always lead you to the truth. Now understand, as sons, sometimes the truth hurts The truth stings. The truth is not what I wanted to hear. But listen, it's the truth that we need to hear. A good, good father is always one who will lead you into all truth. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Luke chapter 15 and verse 20. A good father, a good father will always lead you into truth, number one. What does a good father do? Number two, and he arose and he came to his father. This is the prodigal son. Y'all know the story. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. His father saw him, the son that ran away. He was coming back home, and yet even when the son that was on his way home was afar off, the father had the ability to see him afar off. Now, if it would have been me, I would have sat back and say, you're the one that left? Get over here. I'm going to wait for you right here. Let's be honest, right? Let's be honest. You're the one that left and spent everything you had and made, made a mess of our name now? now I'm going to wait for you right here till you get here. No, not this father. This father, when he saw him from afar off, he got up in compassion and ran to his son. The second empowerment of a father is that he will have the ability to see things into the future. A father will see the next year, two, three, four, five. Uh, you know, one of my sons, he, he's, he, they graduated from the university. He said, Dad, I think my last scene, my senior year in the university, I want to go uh, to, I want to transfer to another un- university. I said, you know, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a, that's, that's a great university. But, but let's pray. Let's see, let's see you know, what, what God wants to do. Because uh, I just don't see. Uh, but, but, but that's fine. Let's pray. You know, we, as parents, we, we, we'd never, you know, this is what you're going to do and this, this is it, whether you like it or not. No, let's see what God says, especially when they're at the age of, you know, sophomore, junior, and uh, senior in high school. 
senior in college. Yeah, come on. Uh, let's pray. Let's see what, what God says. But, 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 you know, in my heart, Brother Wade, I could see, way I could see, I could see in the next two, three, four, five years. And I, I just don't see uh, you transferring. I don't see you moving over there, and I don't see this happening. Uh, I see a little bit different, but let's pray. You see, and now that you can see, you can pray correctly. Most people pray incorrectly because they can't see. We pray dark prayers. So the ability of a father is to say, I can see your next year. I can see our family's next three years. I can see five years from now. As a father, grandfather, God graces you, my friends, with an ability to see. I think we've gotten too accustomed. Come on. I think we've gotten too accustomed to this thing. Well, I just, I just don't see that. I just, well, quit saying that and start saying, I believe I receive. Amen. I just don't see. I just can't see. I, I, pues no sé. No le entiendo. Well, well, turn off the TV. Amen. And, and, and start, start getting with God. And, and start having, d- developing that intuition that you have as a father. Because this father, he could see him from afar off. And not only did he see him from afar off, he got up and he did something. Can you say amen? And so now as fathers, the second great thing that we have is not only do we lead our children and our families to all truth. The second great thing that we can do is that we can avoid a lot of chaos, calamity, and crisis. I said we can avoid a lot of chaos, calamity, and crisis. Because a lot of people, again, have just gotten used to chaos. Boy, if there's no chaos, we're like, what's wrong? Well, no, you got used to too much chaos. The kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17, is not chaos, calamity, and crisis. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, according to Romans 14, 17, is righteousness, peace, peace, peace. And I'm not talking about, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about rest. The kingdom of God is righteousness, rest, and joy. What is joy? Happy. 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 The kingdom of God is not chaos, calamity, and crisis. Going from one thing of trouble to the next thing of trouble. From one battle to the next. From one fight to the next. I think Christians who are especially in the faith camp always used to having always to fight, 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 fight. Battle, battle, battle. Devil, how you doing, bro? Battle, battle. The devil's chasing me again? My gosh, I'll be praying for you, brother. Get away. Amen. Praise the <laughs> Lord. I don't want him chasing me. He ain't chasing me. I, if he shows up, if the devil shows up, we, we doing the chasing. He ain't chasing us. Amen. But I just think too many Christians, I just think too many Christians always, you know, and so, so, so one of the thing is the father, say that's me, is going to develop this anointing that in a year I can see where we're going to be. In three years I can see where we're going to be. In five years, in ten years, that's called a, a three month, six month, one year, three year, five year, ten year plan. You're going to be able to see up ahead and say, I know where we're headed, and I know how to get there. Come on, folks. That's the empowerment of a father that can give to his son. That's powerful. So the number one thing is lead him to the truth. Number two. Number two. The ability to see. Some of you wonder, well, what happened to your son? I, 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 let, him, I let him decide. I'm not going to decide. I'm going to let him decide. He came back and said, no, Dad, I think I'll stay here. I think I have peace about finishing off here. And sure enough, he finished off there. And now he's on some boards at that university. Good gosh. Helping make decisions for the future of students. Number one, as a father, we're leading him to the truth. Number two, we're not going to be the blind leading the blind. You are a great father, and you're going to help lead them, and you're going to have the ability to see into the future. The ability to see up ahead. Because that's all our wives and our children want. They want to know where we headed. Where we headed. My wife will ask me, where we headed? I say, I don't know. Let me go pray. Let me go. Give me a second. (laughs) Every weekend. My wife will say, what's the plan for the weekend, honey? She, that's what they long for. 
Our children, that's what they want, direction. They want leadership. As our children, our wives, they don't just want a, a paycheck and a roof over their head. My gosh, anybody can do that. A roof and a paycheck. They want leadership. And that's what we're giving them as fathers. I'm going to lead you to the truth. And then I'm going to see up ahead and see where we're going. Amen. The third thing and final thing. Go with me to First Chronicles. What a great father does for his children. First Chronicles chapter 22 verse 6 and 7. Then he called for Solomon, his son, say his son, and charged him. What is that word charged? It's empowered him. Not just informed him empowered him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, the father said to the son, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. Verse 11 and verse 14. Now, my son, the Lord be with you and prosper you so you can build a house of the Lord of your God as he has said of us. And then the last verse. Now behold, look at the father. David said this, in my trouble, say in my trouble. So you're going to go through some things as a father. You're going to have to fight. But watch this. I have prepared for the house of the Lord a hundred thousand talents of gold, a hundred thousand, a thousand thousand talents of uh, silver and brass and iron without weight, without weight. For it is in abundance, timber also and stones Have I prepared that you may build a house? What is that? Now, if you were to take all that and put it into today's economy, it'd be $130 million. But listen, what is all that? What that is, a father not only empowering his son by words, but he's empowering his son by action. He He said, you're not just going to build a house. I have already prepared to help you build a house. So as a father, I'm not just going to tell you or even show you. I am going to help you. Now watch this. I'm not going to support you. I mean, excuse me, I'm not going to carry you, but I will support you. Kind of like I told Pastor Bert over there in Snyder, Texas, with Monique now. They just got married in January. I said, son, I am not going to carry you but i will support you that awesome that's what we see here we see this father telling his son you're going to build it but i have prepared all of this extra for you because i'm going to support what you're doing so the third thing of a fatherhood anointing is as a father we support not just with words but we support By preparing and leaving them with something. Preparing and leaving them with something. So in other words, as a father, if you have $200,000 worth of debt, as a father, you ought to at least have a $400,000 life insurance policy. So that when your time comes and you die, we're going to bury you. But we don't just want to bury you. We want you to bless us. And with that $400,000, we're going to cancel the debt that you got us into. And we're going to stay with another $200,000 to start fresh. Is this good teaching or what? Y'all, y'all, falling, y'all falling asleep on me. See, so that's what he did. So as a father, that's what we're doing. We're leading you to the truth. Number two. What was that second thing? We can see ahead. I can see ahead. And know the future. Ain't that awesome? Now, for for most Christians, they know the past. Oh, man, that was horrible. But I'm talking about knowing the future. That when my son told me, Dad, I'm going to propose to this girl, I said, go on right ahead. She the one. Because God done showed me the first time they picked you up when y'all were seventh graders. (laughs) 
<laughs> or whatever, eighth graders or ninth graders or whatever. C to one. Are you with me? And they know that once they get married, when they do, it's done. You're not going to get a divorce. I'll kill you. <laughs> I have to kill you, son. Not her. I have to kill you. Because that doesn't run in our family. That's good, Pastor. That's good. That's good. That's good <laughs> so if you're thinking about dating the other two, you better... Are y'all with me, family? My wife said, he's kidding, he's kidding. Those three things a father does, Brother Daniel. Number one, he leads you to the truth. Number two, he'll be able to see into the future to lead his family and his children and his wife. And number three, he will have prepared to leave something for those children. And for that family. Fathers, I want you to stand to your feet. Just the fathers. Everyone else remain standing. Or sitting, excuse me. Fathers, stand to your feet. You are powerful men. You are powerful men. I don't know what other people have told you. I don't know if you had a biological dad or not. I don't know what they said about you. I don't know if you have a spiritual father. I don't know if you have a father figure, but I'm telling you, you are a powerful man with great potential. And every limit that was transmitted to you from other arenas of life, come on, lift your hands. We erase it right now. Every limit, every limit that has been over your life impotent can't do enable incap uh, how, how, how do you say that uh, without capacity you haven't been able to reach where you want to reach I feel an anointing here. They're going to reach somewhere. Fathers, come up here quick and run. Run up here. Come up here quick. Y'all going to reach places. You you in the pink right there. Both y'all. Both y'all. All y'all. Man, y'all going to reach places. Oh, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise God. My gosh. You're going to do great things. My gosh. You're going to do great things. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm not intending to do this. I know we got to go to go to celebrate. But my gosh. It's going to be erased off your life, son. It's going to be erased. You're going to do great things for God. You're going to do great things for God. You're going to do great things for your family. Uh, no disrespect to anybody else. And no disrespect to anything else. But God's raising you up. God's training you up to do something amazing, to do something mighty. To break barriers and take territory. To go places you've never dreamed of. To do things you've never dreamed of. Stretch your hands, family, to these great fathers. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this is our present and this is our future. And I decree a special grace upon these men now. Lord, to break barriers and take territory. No matter what background, what race, what training or lack of training. As Jesus said, I go to the Father, I'm going to you. The Father and asking you, Father, to release a grace upon their spirit, soul, and body. And upon their faith, their families, and their finances to break barriers and take territory for God in Jesus name say this with me fathers heavenly father I thank you that you will empower me to endow others into all truth 
You will empower me to endow others to lead them into the future. I'll be able to see clearly, know clearly, and receive clearly as you empower me to endow others into the future. And Lord, I receive the empowerment and the endowment to prepare to leave my sons, my daughters, my current generation to prepare it and leave it with resources and substance. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, we'll never be without. We will never lack. Even in times of trouble, even in storms, I shall be empowered. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We receive, Lord. We receive in Jesus' name. We receive in Jesus' name. These, the, the, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one that's doing it for your children and your grandchildren. You are the one that's doing it for your children and your grandchildren. In Jesus' name. You're the one, my friend. You're the one, my friend. You're the one. Don't give up. Don't give in. God is getting you ready to do great things. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and the glory. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Come on, have and receive that. Stand to your feet with me, church, please. Come on, before we get ready to leave. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I recently had a young man in my office this week. I say recently, it was this week. He said, I just feel like... I just feel like, he, you know, he said... He said, my stepdad's a great man. He taught me a couple of things. But he said, I feel like I'm missing something. He said, I feel like I'm missing something. And that's a lot of us. We feel like we're missing something. Know that you have a father that is empowering you. And know as men that when you seek and search for that spiritual I'm not just talking about a coach or a mentor. I'm talking about a spiritual connection. That when you get that, you'll have no fear. No matter what color you are. You'll have no voids or absences in your heart no matter what neighborhood you come from. When you get that, as you're getting it, you'll feel like you can conquer the world. The world. And God's releasing that over you right now. In Jesus' name. Yeah, Pastor, but I've been through divorce. That's okay. A lot of us have. Yeah, Pastor, but I was in prison. That's okay. A lot of us have. Yeah, Pastor, but, you know, I was doing drugs and, you know, that's okay. A lot of us have. What I'm saying is right now, something is coming over your life. And you are going to break stuff. And you're going to lead as a leader. And you are going to break walls down for your children and your children's children and your whole culture and your whole generation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to receive that. Amen. Praise God. That's right. Hug somebody there. Greet somebody. Give somebody a high five and receive right now. Glory. Come on. 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 Glory. 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 Powerful men. Powerful men. Powerful men. Powerful men of God. Powerful. Powerful men, amazing men, successful men, powerful men of God. Powerful men, powerful men, powerful men, powerful men, powerful men. Proud, powerful, 
All right, time to go. We got to go. Hey, listen, we're, we're overtime now. We're working overtime. Does anybody need to get saved? Anybody need to get saved? Anybody want to get saved? It's not a need, it's a want. Anybody want to get saved? Anybody want to get saved? Come right up here. Just walk this way. We're going to uh, walk this way. Uh, walk, come on. Anybody need to get saved before we leave? Anybody need to get saved? Anybody? 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 <laughs> oh, come on. Mick Jagger, walk this way. Come on. Anybody? No. I just got to do my job as a pastor because I don't want God to get mad at me. Everybody saved? Everybody saved? I don't want God to get mad at me, bro. There are some churches, they don't ask people to get saved. But we got to ask. Anybody want to get saved? Everybody saved? All right, good. All right, how about join the church before we leave? Anybody need to join the church? Hey, you never know. We might not be here next Sunday. I'm talking about not us, but I'm like Jesus may come back. And you never got to join the church. Anybody need to join the church? It'll take 30 seconds. Anybody need to join the church? Get out of your seats. Come up front. One, two, three. Three, four, no. All right. Pray about it next week. Amen. Come on. Honey, let's pray and be dismissed on this great Father's Day. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these, your sheep. We bless them today, Father. Thank you for every father, mother, daughter, and son that is in this place. We give you all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Two things. Our prayer partners are here to pray for you if you want specific prayer. And then the donuts and the pictures. We'll be at the Annex building. We'll see you there in five minutes. God bless you. We love you. Have a great Sunday.